how much of your book is personal compared to that idea of being the observer? Mine is completely personal. <laughs> the whole thing. It's, it's me, I think. And, uh, but then the plot is fictionalized. Yeah, mine, I mean, it's, oh, uh, Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because like I get some people, I can tell like who can and cannot relate to it. And people who like the book better generally, I can just tell that they've had some kind, some version of that experience. Um, and uh, the, again, like the, the beauty of it too is just, like I know it's honest, like, so I don't know, it's just out there. But I personally feel like I need to start with some kind of personal experience. Yeah. And yeah, totally. <laughs> Sorry, that was just... <laughs> no. Um, yeah, mine is also completely personal. I feel like, yeah. I don't know, I feel like I've, I've had experience of writing poetry that isn't really I mean, it's still based on something personal, even if it's not, yeah. like, a totally personal thing. But all my poems in there are, like, very personal. Yeah, like, it's very much based on my life. Was it difficult to be that personal and put it out there for the world to see? Yeah, I think it's the hardest, the putting out part. Yeah. And then, like, I'm so embarrassed all the time. <laughs> like, and I can't see it very clearly. Um, but then I know that that's, when I read things, it's the honesty that I'm responding to. Even like my book deals with al growing up with alcoholism, and the book that I connected with is Tender as the Night, which is by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and he writes about these two alcoholics. There's no daughter in there, which I write about the daughter of an alcoholic, but I was just like, clearly, F. Scott F. Scott Fitzgerald is the alcoholic and is an alcoholic, but, and then he wrote about these other characters, but for me it was the honesty that he put those people in there because then I could, I was, could relate. I'm like, oh, I know that. I, that somebody else is having that experience, and I didn't know that anybody else had been having that experience until I was in my early 20s, and I think now people are a lot luckier because there's so much access to books and people write about those difficult topics. So um, I think it's easy, like I think it's important, and it's actually easier to write than if you make something up. Like cause you really, because I find for me it's the complete opposite. Wow. If it's too personal, I have trouble writing it. Yeah, no, I feel oh, like well, because I know, and I got the, a thing from improv from Chris Alvarado. He's I took this improv class, and he kept yelling at us. He's like, all I want is honesty. Is it honest? Is it emotionally honest? And he's like yelling, yelling, yelling. And then I went home and I was editing. I was like, is this emotionally honest? And I used that as the barometer. Oh, wow. And then if I get stuck and it seems boring or not, I was like, okay, what, what is the emotional honesty here? And then, so then it is the easier because it's like an instant checklist. Like, emotionally honest? No. What is it? Then just write the emotional honest part. So it's it's That's easier. An interesting thing though, because I feel like things can be emotionally honest even if they're fictional, right? I'm sure right. what you read is also emotionally honest even if it's. Right. I'd like to think so. <laughs> right. Even if it's fit, like so the plot is fiction or right. the characters are fiction or. Um, so that's interesting too. We I probably all do it. Yeah. We just whether I feel like or not. It would be hard not, not to, to in some way. I mean, right. you can. I mean, maybe it's easy not to in some ways because right. you're just not connected to yourself. But. Um, like a good book is probably always emotionally honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think you. Yeah, I wish I could write in. like more fiction and stuff that's not related to me, but anytime I just think about anything, I'm just like, my life, my life, my life, my <laughs> life. I'm just like self thinking about myself yeah. all the time. But you know what? I, the thing about fiction is that you're in there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, I go back to Diana Gabaldon. She she has one of the most horrific characters I've ever read oh, in her yeah. books. And he is sadistic and, and just just terrible human being. And she was talking about sitting at a tea with these little old ladies and they were talking about this Black Jack character. And she's sitting there sipping her tea like, you don't realize you're having tea with Black Jack Randolph. This all comes from out from within yeah. us. So even a character that I've written, I have one character I struggled with because she was horrible. And I kept trying to soften her edges. I kept trying to find a redeeming quality or an explanation for why she was horrible. And she fought me on it every time. It's like, no, no, 
no, I'm just horrible. And you know, that's still all coming out of you. So it's still personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the fact yeah. that these characters right. are coming from, and I think something. that takes a lot of yeah. courage to write horrible characters, right? Honestly, and admit that you right. know. Uh, to be like, oh, I have this in me to write, to write it. Right. We did an exercise like in college, where we had to read people's essays and kind of like write about what they didn't realize they were writing about. Yeah. Oh, kind of. So like, oh. they have you know an intention, and maybe they did realize who knows, but like, that's what I remember. And then I remember being very afraid to like, <laughs> share any of my work. So I was like, people are gonna see parts of me that I'm not seeing, that I didn't mean yeah, to like yeah. put out there. Um, but I think that's just how it goes. I mean, yeah. people interpret things like the way that through their own lens of experience right. too. Well, so. and then 